Hey you guys, time once again for Tomes of Terror, my little book review series. Now today we're going to be talking about um, the award-winning author Brian Smith. Now from what I could gather, because this is the first thing of his that I've read, um, he's actually more known for his kind of more splatterpunk or more extreme works. But this particular novella, I guess it kind of counts as a novella because it's fairly short, uh, which came out in 2021, is called The Unseen. And although this one definitely has kind of some slasher type gore in it, it's actually kind of more character focused. And it has an absolutely great premise, which I had a really lot of fun with. Um, also, I have to give a shout out. I don't usually do this and I probably should um, more often because I'm a graphic designer, so I know how this kind of stuff goes. But I wanted to give a shout out to the guy that designed the cover, Scott Cole, uh, because that really awesome like retro VHS look was actually a big factor in why I chose this book out of all of the Kindle Unlimited uh, stuff that was offered to me like on the recommendations. So big heads up there. Like I said, I probably should do that more often. You know what I mean? Shout out my fellow graphic designers if they do like a really, really cool uh, cover design. And this one has a really cool cover design. So at the beginning of the story, we meet uh, this young woman named Allison Cook, who's kind of like this abrasive uh, woman. And she's the world's biggest fan of the Friday the 13th movie franchise. Now, as the tale opens, she's at a horror convention and she's kind of like momentarily stepped outside of the venue like to have a smoke. Now, she immediately spots this kind of tall, good looking man uh, wearing a Suspiria shirt and he's pretty openly like staring back at her. Now, normally she would be creeped out by this kind of thing as most women would be, <laughs> but Allison she's kind of feeling a little wicked. You know what I mean? She's a little bit like stepping out of her comfort zone. I kind of feel like, she, you know, she's a big horror fan and she has to be kind of like normal in her regular workaday life. And so when she goes to horror cons, she really kind of likes to bust out and like let her hair down. Like she only smokes at horror cons and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, she kind of just wants to be herself like for a little while. So she pretty much marches straight up to this guy and asks what his deal is vis-a-vis uh, -vis all of the very obvious eye-fucking. So this guy uh, is pretty taken aback by her forthrightness at first, but uh, he does manage to recover his aplomb fairly quickly. Uh, we As we learn kind of in the sections, because it kind of goes back and forth between him and her uh, as far as POV goes. So in the sections where we're in his own head, we actually don't find out his real name until much later in the story, but it's Mark, so that's what I'm going to call him. Um, he's very aware of how attractive he is, and he doesn't have a hard time, like, uh, you know, pulling trim, getting women. But he has a hard time getting them to hang around for reasons that become clear <laughs> as the story goes on. Basically, like, Allison is very clearly wanting to ride the D. And so they kind of have some acerbic back and forth. Uh, he kind of like, I feel like he like negs her a little bit. Like you're not the world's biggest fan of Friday the 13th. And he's always kind of like trying to test her. Like he's, cause she's a girl and she couldn't possibly know all that much about the series, but she absolutely like, you know, passes every single test he thinks to throw at her. Uh, one of which, which I thought was very funny, was that he tells her initially that his name is Steve Miner, and she's like, bullshit, give me some ID. Now, it's like, if you didn't know anything about Friday the 13th, that wouldn't mean anything to you, but, um, I mean, they do kind of explain it later on, but I immediately, like, laughed, because I was just kind of like, Steve Miner was the guy that directed the first uh, Friday the 13th and the second one, too, if I'm remembering correctly. But, yeah, she twigged onto that right immediately, and she's like, that's not your real name, motherfucker. I want to see, like, your driver's license. Uh, so, yeah. So, he then reveals to her, like, when it becomes clear that they're having a little flirtation kind of moment, Moment there, uh, he's like, I have something very, very special that I, has. he's like, I shouldn't be showing it to you, but since you're so into it, like maybe I should. Um, and it has to do with her, you know, beloved Friday the 13th slasher series. Now, obviously she doesn't buy this initially, um, thinking he's just trying to impress her, or, like get in her pants, but she's just kind of like, well, I kind of do want him to get in my pants anyway. So um, yeah, I'll come back with you to, like to your hotel room, like against her better judgment, I guess. Like I said, it's not a good idea like to do, but you know, uh, she does actually have two other friends, uh, Cassie and Julia, who came with her to the con and they're just like by the pool or whatever. So she like takes a picture of the guy and says, what his, name, what his uh, room number is and everything like that. And it's like, hey, you know, uh, this is the guy. So if anything like goes sideways, then you know who he is and where he is. So you can like help me out. 
So they go to his room and have like really amazing mind blowing sex or whatever. And then he shows her this very special thing. Now, the very special thing is essentially a Friday the 13th movie that should not exist. It is, in fact, titled Friday the 13th 9 Homecoming. And not only is it fucking great, one of the best films in this in the whole franchise, but it looks exactly like a movie that was made like in the late 1980s, early 1990s, complete with the score by uh, Harry Manfredini, uh, special effects by Tom Savini himself, or at least that's what it says in the credits. Um, Allison is like skeptical at first, like when they first start watching it, and she thinks, well, this is either just like a really good fan film or like a really good deep fake. But as she watches it, she starts to become convinced that this is absolutely real. She can't figure out how this could be, though. Um, As everyone knows, the ninth movie in the Friday the 13th series was Jason Goes to Hell, the final Friday. So she's like, where the fuck did this movie come from? Uh, And is it really as authentic as it appears to be? Like, there doesn't... She's like, look, I'm the world's biggest Friday the 13th fan. If this movie existed and was lost somehow, like, I totally would have known about it. It would have turned up on the internet somewhere, and it absolutely has not. So on a whim, she decides to swipe the old VHS tape from Mark's hotel room while he's in the can. Uh, She's not initially sure why she does it. She just knows that she has to have it. And, uh, you know, she doesn't have any particular love for this guy. She just wanted to bang him, and she's just kind of like, whatever. So she just, like, takes it out of the old VHS that he brought, uh, the VHS player. And uh, And she just, like, takes it. She wants to find out if it's real and where it came from. Now, obviously, she knows that Mark is going to be gunning for her for the rest, because I think this is only, like, the first day of the con. There's, like, two more days. So, yeah, she's like, he's going to be trying to find me because I stole it. So, with the help of her friends, she's basically like, I need to get out of this con early and go home. So, she actually has manages to slip out. Um, you know, her friends kind of, like, monitor where the guy is, like, after she leaves. And she drives the eight hours back to her hometown without Mark seeing her. One slight problem, though, and I don't think this is necessarily a spoiler because I think that it refers to this like in the synopsis that's on Amazon and Goodreads. It turns out that this movie, Homecoming, is a real Friday the 13th movie, but it's one that comes from another reality, like an alternate dimension. Mark actually received it as a gift from some kind of like scary, like interdimensional being that he just calls the visitor. But uh, also, unfortunately, this being's gifts come with a very, very steep price. So the rest of the story is basically following Mark as he goes on a bit of a rampage, let's call it that, uh, trying to find Allison and trying to get the tape back. And that's like intercut with Allison and her two friends having their lives really violently upended by the corrupting influence of this cursed VHS tape, which actually, like, gets, like, its effects get more and more, like, nefarious, like, the farther away it gets from its original source, like, the person that it was gifted to in the first place. So this is kind of like a really fast-paced mashup of the ring, I guess, because of the cursed videotape angle that kind of, like, has ripple effects, like, outside of it, with a Friday the 13th movie. Um, So this book is like a really, really fun, lively, like entertaining story with kind of like a slasher movie sensibility. There's a lot of slasher type stuff in it, but kind of slightly filtered through this interdimensional, like supernatural kind of lens. Um, Now, I will say the characters are pretty uniformly unlikable (laughs) and not all that developed, but the concept is really so fun that it really hardly matters. Like I wasn't really bothered by that all that much. And the book is so short like it's only 160 pages long that it's kind of more like this breathtaking sprint to the finish like rather than like a longer like slow burn kind of marathon now in some ways I thought that the briefness of it kind of like strengthened the story because it didn't wear out its welcome on the other hand I think I maybe might have liked to spend a little more time getting to know the characters and a bit more time like on the whole idea of the visitor because it's pretty sketchy like sketchily laid out, like where it came from and what its deal is and stuff like that um, and how it influences the world. But then on the other other hand, maybe, you know, I'm always like a big advocate of like horror being better when it's like not explained all that much. So maybe now that I'm thinking about it, it was probably better to like leave the whole concept of the visitor like 
you know, as sketchy as it was, like the backstory and the explanations of where it came from and stuff like that. Maybe it was just like better like that because it was more mysterious. So I don't know. Your mileage may vary on that kind of thing. But it is, just keep in mind, it is a very, very short story. And, um, you know, this, the characters are, while we're inside Allison's head and inside Mark's head, um, you don't really get to know them and they're kind of unlikable. They're both kind of like jerks, you know what I mean? So if that's going to bother you, then maybe it didn't bother me though. Like I, I still thought it was like really fun and the concept is just so fucking great. So if you're a big fan of 80s slashers in particular, uh, I think you'll really get a kick out of this book because it has lots of amusing little references and in-jokes for, you know, horror nerds and stuff like that, like myself. Uh, it's somewhat gory and has like a couple of fairly graphic sex scenes, I guess but nothing as extreme as Brian Smith's usual stuff, at least as far as I could gather from like other reviews of like people that, you know, were big fans of his work and read this one. They're like, oh, this one's really good, but it's not like as extreme or gory. It does have a lot of gore in it, like people getting chopped up with machetes and stuff like that. People getting horribly uh, shot and shit like that. So it, it does have some gore and violence, but not as much as he would usually have. But it's a pretty fun ride though, albeit a very brief one. I mean, I just read it in an hour or two. Um, and you know, to be honest, I think I've said before, like I'm always down for a story about like a cursed movie or a cursed videotape. I really, really like that trope. Uh, so this was like a definite win for me. I had a good time with it. And you know, like I said, it was, it's available to read for free on Kindle Unlimited. It's very short. You can probably get through it like in an afternoon and it's a lot of fun if you're really into slashers. So that'll do it for this installment of Tomes of Terror and I will see you guys again on the next one. Bye.